In this video, I'm going to show you how to build the ultimate bicycle trailer at a PVC pipe. It won't rust, it's strong, it can reliably carry up to about 200 pounds on a daily basis. You don't have to do any welding to create it, and it doesn't require any fancy, fragile, or expensive hardware to connect it to the bicycle. Instead of connecting it to the axle, it connects to the seat post. This allows the bicycle to move in 360 degrees without striking any part of the trailer. I was inspired to design and build this trailer because of the financial impacts of COVID. After having no income for a while, I needed to park my vehicles and rely on my bicycle for transportation. In my case, there's a beautiful bike path that runs along the east side of our island, yet I live up the hill from this wonderful resource. I need an electric bicycle to help me get up and down the hill, and it's very difficult to get lithium batteries here on Kauai. As a result of this, I need to carry four large golf cart style lead acid batteries, and this is why I need a strong and robust bicycle trailer. This is a PVC pipe bicycle trailer prototype that I built from my electric bike a little while ago. I needed a trailer that could haul about 250 pounds worth of golf cart batteries as well as some other cargo when I'm out uh, with the bicycle. So in this case I wanted to make it all out of PVC pipe because I live in a subtropical climate here on the island of Kauai and anything in metal rusts just like you can see my pickup truck on the other side of the bike. It just rusts all the time. So making it out of PVC pipe is great because it won't rust. There's also no wood in this contraption, so there's nothing to rot. So our climate can't go after this, uh, and that was a big attraction point for me. So I used one and a half inch PVC pipe as well as a couple of bicycle tires from my kid's old bicycle that he was no longer using. It was a 20 inch kid's bike. The connecting arm is one of the first things that I upgraded on this trailer. So you can see how the trailer frame itself is made from one and a half inch PVC while the trailer arm is made from two inch PVC. I've been very happy with the two inch because the inch and a half was just too flexible and wasn't sturdy enough. For the last couple months I've been driving this prototype as my daily driver five days a week and to the 200 and let's say 400, 240 pounds of batteries I've been regularly adding about another 100 pounds of cargo. So let's say I've been having about three and a quarter to 350 pounds of weight in this thing on a daily basis and I go from about 180 feet of elevation down to sea level and back and I'm traveling round trip about 10 miles. So, um, you know, a little bit of distance is covered, some elevation is covered as well, and I've had no problems with this trailer. It's performed very well, even going over bumpy objects. Now, the other day, I had to haul uh, a larger amount of cargo than normal, and I had about 250 pounds of cargo in there, in addition to the batteries. And as it turns out, that's the weight limit for the trailer. As you can see in this picture, the, the axle had a critical failure. This is not a problem because I was already planning to rebuild the trailer with thicker pipes. Here you can see inside the box on the trailer where I have the four lead acid batteries wired together to create a 48 volt battery system. The first thing to do is strip off all the usable materials from the first trailer. I created this diagram to show all the different parts and pipe lengths that are needed to create this trailer. Once you've assembled all the materials, it's time to cut the pipes to length. Everything, I glue the middle section together, which almost looks like a ladder. We'll attach the outer pieces later. Standard PVC gluing techniques apply here. A couple of tips. Make sure that you compress the joints together when they're uh, just being glued because sometimes they will push apart in the gluing process. You can see me doing it there. And then also make sure that you have all of your uh, caps lined up together. Um, otherwise your uh, assembly is going to be a little bit wonky. So again, make sure that everything's you know all lined up properly. Hold your joints together for a few minutes until they the glue starts to set enough that they'll hold themselves together. And also don't paint yourself into any corners. See how I'm putting those cross pieces and then I put the end piece on? You don't want to set yourself up so you're trying to put a cap inside of, or a pipe inside of two areas. Always make sure that things uh, you know, connect from the end, etc. Again, don't paint yourself into corners. Those are my best advice. Otherwise, it's just PVC. If you make mistakes, you can go get some more parts and try it again.
Another thing to keep in mind is to make sure that all of your pipes seat all the way into the base of the inside of the connectors. If you look inside of the connectors, there's a little rim where the PVC pipe will go all the way in and then stop or seat into that little rim. And I'll use a little rubber mallet, you can see it at the top left of the screen there, to pound the end of the pipe cap, or I'll just take it and pound it on the table. I want to make sure, in this case I'm compressing it hard enough that I can feel it hit that ridge. You want to make sure that the pipe is really pushed together, that you know, you don't have it only partially into that uh, fitting. You want to make sure that it's pushed all the way in so that it, it hits that rim and it seats properly. It's not hard at all to make some kind of a mistake when you're putting all these little pieces together. So take your time. And when you go to the store and get fittings for this, you might get a few extra of the corner pieces and a few extra of the T pieces and some extra pipe length because it's just going to happen. It's part of the process. A little bit of paint helps to make the trailer frame look good and it also provides protection from the sun's damaging UV rays which tend to make PVC plastic brittle over time. Here you can see the old one and the new one side by side. One of the great things about this design is that you can easily adjust the dimensions to accommodate different sized tires or plastic storage totes. The next step of our build is to create the flat areas on the PVC pipes so that we can attach the wheels. To do this, we've got to heat up the plastic and bend it. To do this, I use a heat gun. Make sure to get the plastic nice and warm, but you don't want to burn it. You want to get it to the point where it starts to be flexible. So I use the wood brace in the back and then the little wood block in the front because that's the size of the indentation that I want to create. And then you can see here I've got these two clamps. So I'm going to go ahead and Put the clamps onto the board and start okay. squeezing that pipe. And if you notice, it's a little bit flexible. It's nice and warm. So squeeze, squeeze, squeeze on one side. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze on the other. And you want to keep moving it in until you get that nice, compressed, flat that we're looking for. And basically what's going to happen there is you're going to have both sides of the PVC pipe are going to come into contact with each other and it almost fuse together. So it creates an area that's twice the thickness of the normal PVC wall. Here you can see I'm using the heat gun to keep that area heat to make sure that I can get it absolutely squeezed in as much as possible. And then of course once it's done we're going to let it cool down. It's important to take your time with this process and really allow the PVC pipes to compress. You don't want to move them too fast when they're cold, otherwise they can crack. And that's not the end of the world, but it's nicer to keep everything, you know, contiguous and sealed up. So again, take your time with this. Make sure everything's nice and warm, but not too warm. You'll get a feel for the material. There is a little bit of an art to it. As we come in on the edge here that we've just created, you notice there's that little white crack. And I believe that comes from forcing the material too quickly or maybe it's an inconsistency in the material, I'm not sure. And here I am doing the second one. So what I do with this particular design is I make these flat areas point to the inside as that's going to be the area that I'm attaching to the actual bicycle frame. And so when I make the flat area, it does line up with the pipe. And again, they're going to the inside, not the outside, and that way they'll attach to the axle of the wheel properly. A little piece of 2x4 is great for creating that perfect size indentation. And as you can see there, I just use a little blunt object to knock it out if it gets stuck, because it does compress hard up against that little plastic wall that it creates. Now it's time to attach the connecting arm to the trailer base. I did not build the T-connector into the base of the trailer because I wanted to have the option of exchanging it in case something went wrong or to remove it if I needed to run wires or do something else. 
As I've seen on some other channels, you can actually use screws to put these pieces together if you want to be able to reuse them or remove them if necessary. So in this case, I've cut off the bottom of the T-connector, heated it a little bit with the heat gun so that it could open up, and that allowed me to slip it over the 2-inch pipe that you see that it's on top of, the 2-inch black pipe. Then just make sure the pipe is vertically positioned properly so it'll connect to the bicycle at the right angle, and we're ready to connect it. I go ahead and drill three holes, and then I insert bolts with washers and nuts on the other side to connect it all the way through the black pipe. This will allow me to remove it later in case the connecting arm breaks or I need to service that area. Then it's back out for painting again. It's nice to lay several extra coats on this as we go through the design. And when we zoom in here, you can see the three little bolts that are coming through the other side holding that connecting arm on. I like to paint all the PVC pipe not only because it looks better, but because it helps to protect the plastic from the damaging UV rays. The sun's rays can help to make this plastic brittle and break apart, but painting it really helps to protect it. It's the next day and the paint is dried. Now it's time to get those wheels on. For trailer wheels, I'm using the front and back wheels of one of my kids' old bicycles. These are 20 inch wheels. I did buy some new tires down at the local bicycle shop and have replaced those. And here you can see the electrical connector that I have running through the trailer. That's an XT90. And then, of course, the trailer hitch connector here. We just flattened the pipe. There's a little hole where the wires come out. But here we flatten the pipe, and that's what connects to the seat post. We got a nice curve using hot water. And here you can see where the wires come out. And then those will run up into the bottom of the tote bin. There's a hole in the bottom of the tote bin, and that runs right up through the tote bin and up to where the batteries are. Speaking of the tote bin, this is one of the ubiquitous black plastic tote bins with the yellow lids. And I've taken my yellow lid and painted it. And I've added a few things to it. You can see the LED lights there on the corner and the reflectors. And then here's the bike. Time to get those tires on. Here is the first dry fit of the first tire and it's looking pretty good. Is it just me or do you see Nessie the Loch Ness Monster here? I used a drill bit that's the diameter of the axle for the tires and drilled holes in either side of those flat areas we made in the pipe. It's important to get these lined up properly and I'm just using a single hole now instead of an adjustment slot or something. These are still prototypes so we'll see how that goes. For the final U section of pipe that encloses the bicycle frame around the tire, I do not glue it in. I actually just use a screw to hold it in. So the little connecting pipe in the middle is glued in to the 90 degree U on the right and then the screw itself goes in through the T-post and then into the pipe itself. And so it's jammed in there as tight as it'll go so it's seated all the way to the base inside of that connector and then the screw goes in to hold it all together. This way you can take off that U-shape, pull the wheel off and service it and then put it back on. This part of the installation can get a little bit fiddly but it's important to make sure that everything lines up correctly. And then just like that, it's all done. Well, at least the base, the connecting arm, and the tires are. Now it's time to get that box fitted on. Again, for this, I'm using one of those standard tote bins that you can get at Home Depot or most of your hardware stores, the ones that are black with the yellow lid. I use self-tapping screws and big washers to secure the tote bin to the frame. Because I haven't been able to get a lithium battery here on the island of Kauai, I've been using four golf cart batteries, and here I have them positioned in the tote bin with a little bit of the spray can expanding foam to help secure it in place. It works great, the batteries don't overheat, and they're not jigging around all inside of the box as I cruise all over the place. A simple cover for the batteries, and you've got good storage space inside the bin. Even the lid itself provides good cargo area as there's a little bit of a depression on top there and you can easily use some bungee cords to strap things on. Although it's a little large and kind of clunky, this battery charger allows me to set the voltage and the amperage for custom charging settings. The e-bike motor runs at 48 volts, so I use four of the car batteries to produce that 48 volt circuit and then I'm able to charge that here to about 52 volts. The motor controller will cut the motor off at 39 volts as the battery discharges for safety purposes. 
This is my daily driver and I can say that I'm pretty happy with the design. Because it's all made out of plastic except for the wheels, it's rust proof and here in our tropical climate that's coastal in Kauai, we have a real problem with rust. In addition to that, the bin itself is waterproof. So if I happen to be traveling during a brief little trade shower that pops up, I'm not going to get my cargo or my batteries all wet. In addition to that, it's nice and lightweight and it's really durable. I regularly haul about 250 to 300 pounds of cargo in that thing. Again, this is my daily driver. So it's a great design. I welcome you to try it yourself. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I hope that you guys stay safe. Aloha.